What's going on, everybody? As always, it's your boy Jada Resanti, and I. Sorry, I get to do pop up stuff some from time to time. When you hear this, make sure you share, like, subscribe, especially share. This week, ladies and gentlemen, oh, guess who just popped in? Mr. Big Boy himself, Mr. Isaiah Cassidy. What's good, boy? Yo, you owe me an interview. Come holler at me. Stop playing games. <laughs> love what those kids did this past week, man. Yeah. Let me um quick to get this off. Um, love, love what they did this past week. Let me get this down. Let's let's show the fandom who's in the building. Boy, yes, we are. Oh, but shit. Anthony Gangone, House of Glory's champion, as well as CCW's tag team champ, is in the building. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, also Capital Wrestling TV champion. Oh, Capital Wrestling's TV champ. Oh, you didn't bring that belt, but you because uh, I the, you it's, the others, it's actually sponsored by a strip club, and I kind of left it there. <laughs> so, Jasmine, I will get my title back. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait, wait. I, 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 need, I need to get that. I need to hear that one again. Wait, hold on, wait. <laughs> so, wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that the Capital, the Capital Wrestling's championship belt is TV championship. The TV championship yeah. belt is sponsored by a strip club in New York City, uh, Sapphire. Ooh, yeah. Shout out to Sapphire. You guys invested in the right thing. You invested with the champ. Yeah. I'm like the perfect poster boy for that. So. What, what, do you not like go into the ring? You should go into the ring with a stripper or something like that. I mean, I know I know some, some You know people. some things? You know yeah, some, I thi know some, people. <laughs> some things can I'm, happen. I'm friends with a lot of beautiful women. So. Yeah, as well as you should. I mean, it is what it is, right? <laughs> I, 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 see, that's why I try to keep you close because my... um. My beautiful women's circle yeah. is not as beautiful as it used to be like in the <laughs> '90s. In the '90s, it was upscale. Yeah. Now it's um, I'm at me mediocre fives these days. Oh, I see. But it's okay. It's all yeah. right. we'll, 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 we'll push through it. Now that I got you in, in in this circle, plus holding a belt like this, wow, this. Yeah. People always talk about like independent championships yeah. are not weighty. This this has some levity to it. Yeah, and his, and his, and history. It has some history to it. Yeah. Uh, CCW's been around for whew. since ninety ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. And and for you to capture the tag titles mm -hmm. says a lot about what 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 you've accomplished in the past couple of years, man. Yeah. Uh, once again, just to give everybody a, a recap of Anthony Gangone, who's been a, f a friend and face to Turnbuckle Tablet for a long time. Look at that; we already have uh, viewers coming in. Uh, you've been wrestling for how long again? So I started training October 2011, mm -hmm. and then I had my first match in April 2012. All right. So with the first match, but we've had this story many times, yeah. but with the first match, was it I'm going to shit my drawers when I get in the match, or, or was it like... <laughs> well, I still kind of get that way now. Um, but... You mean a pro like you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still get nervous. Uh, I may or may not gag a little bit before the match. <laughs> but um, no, you say I, gag, and then I'll, I'll start thinking about strippers again, or yeah. whatever the case. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, I, I I would say I pretty much have the same feeling now that I did then. Not not overly. The anxiety is not too much, but right. still, it was there. Uh, now these days. You you coming you you come into the ring and you're you're basically holding heavy metal. Like, mm -hmm. hey, does it but it does it help the confidence when you come into the ring a little something knowing that you're carrying something of this magnitude? Um, I mean, I don't know if it's it helps me during, but definitely when I think about it, if I sit back and I'm by myself, I'm kind of you know I accomplished more in my wrestling career than I ever thought. The the very little bit that I I have done. I've accomplished more. Like four year old me would go crazy right now. My teenager me, like to hold the CZW World Tag Team Championships right, right now, is like, what, like what the fuck? Like for exactly. real? <laughs> exactly. Because because me holding it, I didn't do shit for it. I feel like I'm yeah. a champ. Well, I need I need a tag team partner. So yeah, I so, am taking. Well, let's think about this. I'm I am red. I I do call myself the red. Yeah. And um, I've um. Big Ben, Mook, what's up, boys? Um, from England, my guys, you're checking it from England. Mm -hmm. And I might not be a high flyer, but I've been known to be a middle rope, uh, middle rope champ. Mid I, I know middle how to. Rope? I know you, how to. It work looks the, more like I a know, bottom rope. No, no. no. <laughs> 
listen, I, I've worked on my craft. I, I've, I've got up to the next level. I've been known to I've been known to do a, a nice six inch frog splash. So I, I've been good to do that. But with with all these accolades that you, I mean, you've you've hit numerous independent scenes. Mm-hmm. How fast did it happen that you were able to? Uh, roll out of not to say roll out because you're still a house of glory uh, 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 student because that's you guys you never you never you never stop learning. Yep. How was how fast was it for you to start getting bookings outside of house of glory? All right. Well, I don't I don't rem- really remember. I remember the first year I only had eight bookings, mm-hmm. and then after that it kind of um, upgraded. And every mostly every year, with the exception of last year, was was getting. Uh, you know, better and better. Right. And like in the beginning, it was me, Mark Quinn, and Smiley. Mm-hmm. So if Mark Quinn got got booked, he would bring us along. If Smiley got booked, he would bring us along. If I got booked, I would bring them along. And then other than that, I mean, those those two were were kind of my circle at that time, and we all helped each other out. And then you know, life kind of separates you. And but like th- for the first couple of years, those those two were my guys. Guys, the phone lines are open if you guys want to ask um, Gangone any questions right now. Uh, lines are open, 315-371-4367. We're only going to be on for probably the next 15 minutes because you're not going to get this whole fucking interview. Not even an interview because whenever you come in, it's not an interview. We just have we, we, we have conversations. And yeah. I, I, I think that's lost when it comes to, especially you guys in, in professional wrestling, that – Everybody wants to hit you with a hard hitting thing. It's like, so when you're in a match, is it, is it bad to take a choke slam? Mm-hmm. I, 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 I find myself that I enjoy conversations with you guys because I feel as though that listeners and, and wrestling fans get to know a little bit more about you outside the ring because there's stuff out there outside the ring that needs to be recognized, such as what you revealed. Oh, look at that. Already. Getting a call. They didn't even, they stepped on my whole shit. Hold on. <laughs> Turnbuckle tabloid, who's this? Hey, handsome. Okay, you're gonna have to lower down your, your you're gonna have to lower down your 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 your, your, your whatever Yo, speaking Mad- device, whatever device you have going on over there because I can't hear shit. Yo, Maddie, what's going on, buddy? Yo, who's this? It's Rob. Yo, Rob, what's good, baby? Yo, what's good, Broski? Listen, uh, we got we're here with the boy, House of Glory champion, and oh, yeah. Anthony go. Uh, What's going on, Red? You have it. You have anything? You have anything to um to ask the man or talk to him about? Yeah. What do you think is better, um, AEW or WWE? Ooh, it's funny because before the mics went on, we actually discussed whether or not he's a wrestling fan or if he's still watching. So, what do you think is better, AEW or WWE? Uh, I mean, I'm gonna go with AEW just because they're giving the uh, power kind of back oh, to the wrestling. <laughs> Rob, where the fuck are you at? Nigga, hey, I'm in the beach fishing. <laughs> oh, nice. I, I, but uh, but thank you for checking in while you're uh, in the beach fishing? No uh, doubt. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, I bet you have a Bud Light I'm in your hand. Fishing, or, buddy. Or some kind of beer. Oh, definitely. I had one already. A few. Motherfucker. <laughs> Listen, by the way, uh, are you coming out for uh, um, Homicide Sunday? Show on Sunday? Definitely. Yeah, we see you there. Anything else you want to All right, ask? no doubt. Guys. Anything else you want to ask? No, nah, man. Chat? Keep on with the... Tabloid, bro. Keep on. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for calling in. It's the first time you fucking call in, you bitch. <laughs> Later, boy. Later, bro. Later. All right, bro. Um, yeah, so, like I said, we pull back the layers for, from, from the wrestlers, and we know what's going on with, with, with outside. Because a lot of times, really, I, I hate the whole process of, okay, listen, you know, what we do in the ring is us, it's us and, and this is just our quote-unquote gimmick or what it is yeah. but you pull back the layers recently of what you're going through personally mm-hmm. and um that's something that many individuals are not accustomed to doing shit <laughs> it might have been a bad thing to do this on Turbo tabloid who's this helps ben from england big ben from england mm, look at that yeah do, do, do you have any english fans any british fans uh gang uh i I think I think so, but I can't think of uh, who specifically right now. I have, are, are, is our passport ready to go to England yes, if, if need yes, be? Yes, it's very ready to. Yeah. Big Ben, what's going on, sir? I haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah, I've been busy with weird man. I can't 
ring in as much as I used to because I was going to be a bit of a last time. So I have to be a bit careful. If I'm off like I am now, I'll ring in. If I'm not, then I can't. So I, I still watch anyway. I, it, it swells the heart to know that an individual from England is actually listening and watching the show. It just swells. See, as I tell people, we do big things here. <laughs> so, uh, man, let me ask you. You might. I, I'm not sure if you're aware of, of House of Glory's champ, also CCW. I, I know you know CCW. Yeah, I love, me, love CZW, yeah, definitely. I mean, I've watched it for a while because it's quite hard to watch over here, and I do get glimpses of House of Glory and stuff, so, yeah. So you got CCW's champ in the building, uh, his tag champ, uh, uh, Anthony Gangone. Is there any uh, any questions, especially when it comes to independent wrestling, that you want to ask him? Well, I mean, this might be a bit of a odd question to ask someone who's the CZW tag champ, but what did he think of the chair shot on AEW from... John Spears on Cody Rhodes. Is everyone going a bit over the top for it, or are you all right with it? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's their decision what they do with their body. So if, if I mean, the story is kind of like blurred on what exactly happened, but you know, you know whether it was a mistake, whether he didn't get his hands up in time, whatever it is, um, I think we should just take it for what it is and. You know, the real person that should get the uh, quote-unquote heat from it is uh, Sean Spears because he tried to go out there and hurt Cody Rhodes, right? So why don't we focus our attention on, on that and, you know, hopefully they have this killer match later on. I think I think the cool what people are all, like, perplexed about, which is I'm like, why are you fucking questioning things? Yeah. It's because of the unprotected chair shot, the way it's done, whatever the case may be. And it's like, it's a, it's a intuitive to what the story is. Yeah. That's what you got to get. And I embrace that. I love it. Yeah. It's fine. Ben, you watched, uh, you just mentioned it. You made in the comments uh, with Private Party. This is a man who's been in the ring with both Quinn and Isaiah Cassidy. Uh, what are your thoughts of Private Party? Because this is just basically his, his family that's in it. What's your thoughts of them? I thought they were really good. Um, were they in, was it the Battle Royal they were in at? Double or nothing, and we didn't really get to see much of them. Right. They're in the back row, weren't they? Yeah. On double or nothing, they're in the yeah. So we didn't really get to see much of them. So I was quite happy. The fighter fest, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I went in with an open mind because, you know, it wasn't as uh, yeah, but when you pushed get... the double or nothing, so it was like, oh, I'll see what it's like. It might be good, it might be shit. We don't know. Just go in with an open mind. Yeah, you. you so just... I was quite happy. Get going. You've taken well, a few of those 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 bumps that um they they dished mm -hmm. out to other yeah. so you know what it was to take those they, things. They tested those moves on me. So when you watch when you when you're watching something like that, how does how does it how does it make you feel? Not only as just them being close family members, being friends, but also to know that they've they've made it to yeah. us that level. Yeah. What goes through your mind when you hear when you see that? I was marking out like. That's like, a, like a I, that's fan, what I wanted like, to hear. <laughs> yeah, no, what, what, just because for me, one Isaiah was the first one, and I th I was like, this is gonna be the first guy that comes out of House of Glory that's signed, right? That signs that contract. And Quinn to me was was always was always a star. And like the fact that Jim Cornette, you know, their bosses basically is like uh, you young bucks or whatever, right? And the fact that Jim Cornette kind of hates them. But Quinn was able to uh, sway Jim Cornette to call him a major star one day or whatever. And, well, but, oh, and, you, so yeah, you did hear that? Yeah, I did. Oh, my and God. I I think was, I, my heart swelled when I heard that. I think once once he sees what Isaiah can do a little bit more, what Isaiah can do, he's going to be on board right. a thousand percent with both of them and beyond happy for them because they did it the right way, in my opinion. And they were always awesome and you know, I'm just glad that everyone else, because like for me, they did the battle royal, and it was just like, um, you know, you don't really get to showcase yourself too much in that, right? But I knew the moment they had their own kind of match that they were gonna kill it, and that's exactly what happened. Ben, uh, before yeah. I let you go, uh, what 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 are you looking forward to uh, when it comes to to independent wrestling? Um, well, like, I'm looking forward to when the Weekly TV show starts. Um, um, like the question you had before, what's better, AEW, WWE? That's not a question you can ask yet because AEW's had three pay-per-views, two pay-per-views, mm -hmm. either way. So they're, they're nowhere near yet. But give it a year, give it a couple of years, and you know, then you can decide which is better, really. 
Um, but entertainment wise, I'm I'm AEW all the way, and I find it more interesting. But I must say, WWE picked its game up on Raw, especially uh, SmackDown was a bit shit. But <laughs> as soon as as soon as this Bischoff gets the reins, we'll get to see um, if it's a bit better. I think the fact that AEW is now getting bigger is making Vince and WWE pick the shit up, which is the more rest, the more competition, the better people have to be, which I think is good as a wrestling fan. And I think Triple H will be loving the fact that AEW is around now because it'll make Vince pull his finger out his arse and hopefully <laughs> listen to the fans a bit more. Which I let him talk because I, I just want to hear so. the accent. <laughs> <laughs> which, which I think he will start doing now. So the more uh, indie wrestlers that get signed to AEW, like, like you, you make there and all that. If that guy gets signed, that's awesome. So, the more the better, I say. I think it's a good time to be a wrestling fan. You, uh, people can whinge all they want, but it's better than having one brand. So, the more the merrier, I say. All right, Governor. I have to let you go. I need, I need some ale yep. right now. So, uh, thanks for calling yep. in, Ben, as always. And you, um, thank you for, for being a, a listener. And, and you really need to download and stream the episodes more. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> all right. So, um, probably gonna probably take another call. Probably gonna survive. <laughs> but um, like I said, you pull back the layers of what's going on, and you we we spoke about your mental health. guys. Don't call yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we you pull back the layers about uh, your mental health, mm -hmm. and a, a lot of people don't understand that what's the fair imbalance of individuals who go through uh, mental health disorders, mm -hmm. uh, bipolar, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever the case may be. I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an individual who finds himself very... I, I'm, I'm insecure, but I'm very secure with myself. Mm -hmm. I have my insecurities, and I also have my moments of, of depressions, with the bouts, especially when it comes to love. I'm a fucking... I'm a depressing sap when it comes to love. Jesus, that's why I post all those damn R&B songs. <laughs> <laughs> but what... Like, have, you, have you discussed what, like, what, 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 what were you told? What's the difference between what goes on with... Like uh, isolated moments of depression or long-term issues of bipolarism and stuff like that. Uh, what what exactly are you asking? Well, with to be diagnosed yeah. of what what you have, mm -hmm. there's, of course, that's meaning that you have to deal with it as in in as a legitimate health where people have isolated incidents of probably certain side of, not side effects or certain um, instances of it. Yeah. So where where were you? Or was it discussed to you by, by physicians and psychiatrists to tell you what's the difference? Because I think people are very vague. They like to go on social media like, oh, I'm fucking depressed. Well, I'm feeling this way just for attention. Is there is there any like thought process of what makes it a true de de definition of a diagnosis? Yeah. Okay. So, like, for in my case, it could go to two very uh, strong extremes, right? So I could be very depressed for very long, uh, two week, over two weeks, right? Or I can be manic, right? And if I, I know that something's bad, right? And I, I know it deep down, but I still want to do it. Or I still like, let's say like punch a wall, let's just say, mm -hmm. right? But I still want to do it. Or if I punch that wall, it'll feel good to do it. But then later on, uh, when I come kind of down from that um, extreme or high, I will feel I'll feel very de depressed or or guilty about it, uh, even though I knew that it was ultimately it was wrong for me to feel good about like punching a wall. Let's say, yeah. Is it is it a thing to where it it happens out of nowhere, or is there triggers? Um, I mean, it it could happen really out of nowhere. I mean, there's definitely triggers, right? So like, I can, I could be fine, right? And then all of a sudden, I'll get this, I'll get a message or whatever that'll bring that will remind me of of something, and then kind of bring me back down to kind of being depressed or whatever. I mean, it's kind of like, um, you know, you know, PTSD ex exists outside of uh, just being at war, right? You know? Yeah, uh, definitely. So like any kind of traumatic kind of experience and so it's kind of in in those terms as well yeah because i i, I feel that people don't understand the, the the legitimacy of what mental health is mm -hmm. and i and as people know what as they listen to the show that i've been i've worked in the field for over five years and i understand 
what the real diagnoses are. And, and they, I, I've seen it f- firsthand where individuals are, and we spoke about it before, where it's, it becomes a thing to where we, 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 we're cool one minute, then it's another minute. I don't, I don't even fucking know you anymore. And mm-hmm. it, it, it could be something to a tale to where people don't want to deal with it. Have you gotten to a point where people are just, and they, they're trying to like deal with you with kid gloves, like they, they, they and then when you feel as though people are like, uh, I don't want to deal with we're getting going because you know he just exposed himself being you know, this thing. Um, I mean, I wouldn't know because it just it's been a week, you know, since I let the world right. know. Like very few people knew before this, very few, especially in wrestling. And then like a couple months ago, I let a couple more people in clearly. And um, it was kind of a way to like rally the troops, I guess, mm-hmm. to be like, hey, you know, almost died for this kind of thing. And like, let's let's all be a team kind of kind of aspect. But like, I don't want to be treated differently from anybody or treat me the same as everybody else. I'm just. I said my story. I've said kind of whatever the case, you know, my truth or whatever. And, you know, eventually I was going to let the world know on my own terms about it and to help people. And, uh, you know, I've received hundreds of messages and, you know, throughout all these years, um, I always knew there was a something, uh, there was something. And when I got diagnosed with it two years ago, you know, I just got diagnosed with it. I had it my whole life. You know, it's not like I didn't like all of a sudden I had it. Like I had it my whole life and like a whole bunch of people used to message me about their own mental health. And I would always respond and and try my best to, to help them or guide them to go get the help they may need. Um, So, because I did that myself, you know, in and out of therapy and medicated like crazy. Uh, I mean, I would lose Hours in the day, just I wouldn't know what what was happening. Did you start doing since you, you pretty much you, like you mentioned that you do? It's been something you've been dealing with your whole life, but didn't know it. Yeah. Once you you get the diagnosis and you you finally start putting pieces in place, mm-hmm. do you start doing retrospective of your life and you go, oh shit, this is probably why I did what I did here. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Where, no, definitely. Like, what? Okay, so once I accepted it, because right. there's like. There's a point in time where you're like, nah, that's not me. Like, I was misdiagnosed, that kind of thing, right? Denial, but then, denial yeah, system. denial, exactly. And then when you think about your life and you think about specific situations, you're like, mm, you know what, that made sex uh, sense. Uh, that that was a manic state, or that was th- that kind of state. So right. yeah, yeah, because I see that um, in many instances, in many cases, there's there's this. It's almost like a recovering alcoholic that you have to go through a process to, like you said, denial becomes thing, and then it becomes a setting to where you have. I don't know whether you 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 start up. I don't know if it's apologizing or, or conforming to other individuals. Like, listen, uh, now I know why I did this. Is this is this something that transitions as well when you when you when you get this diagnosis of, wow, I understand why I was a fucking prick or I was dissuaded to somebody. Like, do you get it? You no, have to do that to I mean, for me, I've never, I've only hurt people because I hurt myself. I right, never, okay. I never intentionally went out to hurt people or whatever. Like, um, I'm very much of like trying to help everyone. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I feel bad if, if they come off a certain way. So it hurts me, but let's say I would, I would like hurt myself. Uh, that's really, uh, how I've hurt people in my life whether that be former friends um women i was involved with or especially my family and my sister that that is one aspect that i think that a lot of people don't take in consideration is the family aspect yeah and before i before we had to cut off the feeds i i I want people to understand that as well Mm -hmm. is the front line which is family that has been direct contact with you when you finally get the realization of what's been going on with you. For the longest time, was there a lot of uh, conflict and burnt bridges that occurred during the the, the, tra- like the transition? Because people are just like, oh, you know, he he's just who he is, whatever. Yeah. No, because like you'll be you'll be labeled a certain way as like the oh, you're trying to be the victim <laughs> and all this other stuff, and it's just like it's ignorant to say stuff like that, and like. 
honestly, my family and my sister are the only um, individuals that ever fully, fully stayed by me the whole time. Everybody else um, from afar and or just disappeared from my life. Uh, wet, and most of the time, I, it's understandable. It sucks. It's understandable most of the time. There's other situations where it's like, mm, you know what, maybe this person was just an asshole. That kind I, of thing. I'll, um, two more things, and then I have to cut the feet off, and then we'll yeah. uh, continue in the podcast. Uh, the one thing is, did you ever find any outlets to try to suppress it? Meaning, you know, uh, you know, uh, let's smoke weed or mm -hmm. drink or stuff, stuff like that. No, see, I stood away from drinking and, and, and drugs and all that. Because honestly, if, if I did that stuff, I guarantee you I wouldn't be alive right now. I guarantee you oh, okay. I wouldn't be alive. So like somehow I was able to kind of restrain myself from doing that. Although there's been many times in my life where I was like, you know, I wanted to, to drink my problems away kind right. of thing, you know, but I, I stood away from that. I mean, you know, you know, trying to commit suicide or whatever, there's been multiple times that that's occurred. And then my story that I said, uh, that was probably the worst one. And, you know, I used whatever drugs was available at that time to try to overdose. So, oh, so you were, you, you did, you did. Um... <laughs> yeah. I was like, every pill I could find. Uh, and it's just, I remember like, it was so, it was so bad that I was just like, fuck it. I, I don't want to live anymore. So I just, I took everything I could. And the day before, I took as much as I could as well, and I spit it all out. I was like, oh, maybe this is not the right decision. And then the next morning, I was like, I don't want to live anymore. And I took everything I could, and I went to bed, and I woke up. I'm telling you this, because in my head, I would research it, and I would think like, oh, you know, taking all these pills would, would be the least painful for me to die with you know i just fall asleep and then never wake up right right and i woke up with the worst fucking stomach pain like i can't even describe how bad it was mm -hmm. and my dumb ass would think like oh maybe if i take an epsom salt bad uh bath that it'll be better no it wasn't i had to go to the hospital that day and if i flatlined you know you know my thought process was well i guess the hospital is the best way to do that it's um it's one of those things that a lot of people don't feel as though that they struggle with it because they don't accept it. They don't get it. They're like, oh, I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. It's just a passing moment. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you've, you, you, you've had moments where it just wasn't a moment. It, it, it had stretches. Yeah. And you don't realize that this is something that's going to be a part of you for a long time until you have to deal and work through it. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you recently had well, you didn't have to. You did because you felt you did. And this uh, this will be the last one before I have to cut off the feed. Sorry, guys. You gotta, if you want to hear the rest of this, you got to download the episode and stream it. Uh, you recently had to do it because of certain accusations. And, mm -hmm. and, and it was almost as though you were exposed or, or um, your personal life was shared for no reason. Yeah. Um, Although you don't, you can't be in the same, uh, you don't know what the mindset of a person who did it. Yeah. Do you have any idea where this came from? What, 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 why would somebody want to expose you or, or, or share your personal life yeah. as they would say, straight shoot, no kayfabe? Yeah. Like, why would they do this? Um, you know, I probably want to keep that one more to myself. But I mean, ultimately, I guess all I can say is that uh, it was done with intention and, and maliciousness uh, yeah and purposely trying to hurt me or um maybe even affect well not maybe affect my career and uh i think it was uh, a poor decision uh, on their end and if they were trying to hurt me in that way which i think it was um i would say it kind of backfired on them and uh, maybe they weren't thinking the best way that they could if this was a couple of years ago mm -hmm. what if what in would have it been a different way that you would have dealt with this, you know, now knowing your, your, your mental stability, your mental health, the way it is, would it, would you have taken it another way? Um, I don't know because like the thing with me is that I've always confronted people face to face. And it, I mean, there's guys on television that I've confronted because they were, 
uh, speaking a certain way about me or whatever. And it, it's like you go up to them and you kind of handle it one of two ways in my thought process is like you talk like men and you try to figure it out or you kind of do it the kind of less civilized way and just you know if you have to fight you have to fight kind of well thing. you beat the shit out of somebody or you have to beat or, the shit yeah or <laughs> you just fight and, and, and see it. where it goes so uh but i mean i'm i've never i've never really uh out of anger just straight up just fucking went after someone anytime that's been a fight it's always been the other person first and then you handle it from there all right, guys. Got to let you guys go. The rest of this, in, this in, uh, conversation, mm -hmm. rest of this conversation, you got to get on the next episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid. Like I said, like, share, and subscribe, and be a part of the conversation as well. This will be something that right now that you could put and and share on your pages because this is not only just wrestling. It's something that is derivative to what's going on in our society these days, and we need to be more conscious and aware of other well-being positions and their mind state. And of course, understand that when it comes to our livelihood, the first thing that we need to recognize is our own well-being and our own and our own feelings, rather than just think that everything has to go about what society perceives us to need to be. We need to be comfortable with ourselves first and comfortable in our surroundings and comfortable in our situation before we can move on with ourselves. So guys, we are out of here. Thanks again for watching and um Wow, the streams are going up, but you know what? Gotta go later. <laughs>